When I was making this video, I had an unfortunate accident. As you can see, this pumpkin has completely rotted. Now, I don't know if I happened to just get one that was already overripe, but within three days of being in my house, it turned into this. Now, this looks pretty awesome and very Halloween-y. It's all slimy and sludgy, but I can't use it to carve up. The good news is, it's not going to go to waste. So this little guy and his dad are going to eat it for their dinner probably between now and the next three weeks. I have a hole for varium filled with snails, wood lice and lots of creepy crawlies so they'll all be eating this and I hope they enjoy their Halloween treat. For this video you'll need either a pumpkin carving kit which you can get in most supermarkets or online or alternatively, if you have an adult to help you, you can use knives and spoons and equipment that you'll find in your kitchen. Hi everyone, welcome back to another Kate's Crafts video. Now today we're going to be carving a pumpkin for Halloween. I'm going to make sure that I do a nice simple traditional face on one of them and then I'm going to try a bit more of a complicated design on another one. So as you can see, I've got all my equipment set up on the table. Unfortunately, the massive pumpkin I got turned into complete mush, but we've still got Bob and his brother Fred and we're going to carve them up and see what awesome patterns we can get. And then later on, once it gets dark, I'm going to put some night lights in them and we're going to see what they look like lit up in the dark. The first thing you'll need to do is cut a hole in the top of your pumpkin. This one's Fred and this one's Bob. He's watching his friend get cut up today. We're going to cut open Fred's head and we're going to scoop out all of his pumpkin seed brains and put them in a bowl. You don't have to throw your pumpkin seeds away, you can roast them and eat them as a snack later. Here's our helper today, his name's Jacques, and he's going to help us to cut open Fred's head. First thing you need to do is draw a circle on top of the pumpkin and also decide what's going to be the front where the face is and what's going to be the back. At the back, add a triangle to your circle. This is going to be your safety catch for the pumpkin top. I'll show you why the triangle is so special later. Now, I've carefully cut round really, really slowly with my knife and this is what it looks like inside. Now comes the slimy, messy bit. We need to scrape out all of those seeds and put them in a bowl so that we can eat them later. I'm using a big spoon to scrape them out, but sometimes, if I'm honest, it's easier to use your hand it's just a bit cold and slimy on your fingers. There we go, everything's been hollowed out and I've got all the seeds and stringy bits in a bowl there. There's the top and there's a triangular notch on the back and remember I'll show you how that works later. The next stage is scraping out more of the flesh from the walls so they're not as thick and then it'll be time to draw the face on. Once I've cut out the big chunks of pumpkin flesh inside, I'm finding that Fred's head is a lot easier to scrape out with a spoon. He's actually really hard because he's not quite ripe yet, but I'd prefer that because we don't want another accident to happen where he just turns to a big pile of orange mush. If your pumpkin is bigger and a lot softer, it will be so much easier just to scrape the walls and big chunks will come away. I'm using the tip of a tablespoon to scrape up from the inside. And this is great because if you get small bits, they're easier to turn into soup. Keep repeating what you're doing. Pull out any bits that you've scraped off and put them into your bowl. Make sure you don't scrape away too much flesh. You still want it to look like a pumpkin inside. You do need to make sure that it is hollowed out as much as possible though, otherwise you won't have room for your hands to work inside 
or to put the night light. Here we have our bowl full of stringy bits and here's the flesh. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like inside and what the triangle does. This is the back of the pumpkin and it's completely hollowed out now. The trick with the triangle knot is something that my granddad taught me. Once you know where the back of the pumpkin is, that's where you're going to put the triangle because nobody can see it. It's really helpful because it means that if you accidentally knock it over, it's a lot safer. It also means that when you've had the nightlight in there for a while, if the top of your pumpkin starts to shrink, it won't fall in and extinguish the light. I've been using this technique for years, probably around about 30 years actually, and it's also really helpful if you have cats or dogs that might be likely to knock the pumpkin over. What do you think about it, Bob? Oh, he's looking a bit worried. Maybe he doesn't want his brains in a bowl. Here comes the fun bit. It's time to decide what kind of face you want on the front of your jack-o'-lantern. We call it a jack-o'-lantern, but maybe we should call it a jack-o'-lantern. Come on, little mousy, let's get going. The best kind of design to make is something that's got straight edges. This is because the tools in your pumpkin carving kit or the knife from your kitchen all have straight edges too. So it makes it easier to put it into the flesh of the pumpkin and then cut along. The kind of shapes that you want to use in the pattern or when you're making a face will be squares, triangles and zigzags. The skin of the pumpkin is quite hard, so you might need someone to help you pierce it at first. But once your implement is in, it should be easy to gently slide it and carve it down to start making the pattern. When you're making the teeth of your pumpkin, no matter what shape you're doing, it's always best to leave a gap so it looks like the pumpkin has its mouth open. I find that triangles are the easiest to draw and also the easiest to cut out. So when you're doing it, just make sure that the top of the triangle doesn't reach the top lip. The only other thing to remember is not to cut the base of the triangle because the teeth need to stay attached to the gums. I need to be safe in this video and I don't have a tripod or anyone to help me film so I won't be able to show myself cutting out the mouth. But this is the most fiddly, tricky bit of the whole thing so remember, don't cut across the base of the teeth. Take your time and ask for help if you need it. Here's what my cut-out jack-o'-lantern pumpkin face looks like. As you can see, the eyes and the nose and some of the teeth look a little bit strange. That's because there's still lots of pumpkin flesh on the inside. So we need to take our spoon or our carving kit implement and just scrape some more of that away. Once you're happy with how everything looks, it's time to light it up from the inside. You can either use a traditional tea light which uses a flame, or you can put an LED lamp, a torch, anything inside. I filmed this in the afternoon, so it's not totally dark, but later on I will show you what it looks like at midnight. This is my first jack-o'-lantern of the season, and I really enjoyed making it. But what's going to happen to Bob?
and Bob says, no, no, please don't turn me into a jack-o'-lantern, I promise I'll be good. Why, Bob, what big eyes you've got. So there's Fred on the left and poor Bob is there on the right. I would love to see the different pumpkins that you've made and how your faces turned out. So your parents can tag me on Instagram or Facebook or even Twitter. There's only a couple of days until Halloween. So I want to say have a lovely spooky time and don't forget to stay safe.